So welcome to another episode of the Via VHS Retro Movie Podcast. I'm your host, Wesley, as always, joined by Mr. Scott Holmes. And we called an audible this week. Uh, we we had a, a movie lined up that we really wanted to talk about, and we will get to that. I think we might even do it next week. But, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately, during the week, we heard about Carl Weathers passing away. And, um, you know, that's somebody that we brought up on the show a lot, and we both speak highly of. We both really love Carl Weathers. We both, I think, are in, you know, we both agree that he was even better than, I think, people remember. Like, he he always felt like a step above when he was in, even in Predator or even in Rocky. Just felt like he was a little bit better than the other actors around him. And I I don't feel like, you know, he had a great career, but I feel like he never really got the acclaim that he he could he deserved but he's remembered for so many iconic roles even chubs yeah you know so well that's the thing is yeah carl weathers is you know we've mentioned it many times before and i know even on old man orange and all that stuff it's just like he really is like a super actor that's the thing yeah he's just such an amazing actor that i always even as like a young kid i always just wanted to see him and much you know bigger things going on and you know yeah he has a lot of stuff but he, but it's like he never got those like giant starring roles where I think he could have really used all that talent and so on in there. And this movie here, Hurricane Smith, it's kind of weird. I was looking at it. It's his last starring movie that he has. From past this point, he never stars in another movie. He's always either second roster, made for TV, you know, voiceover, that kind of stuff. The, this this is the the grand finale, you know. Of the, and it's, I guess he got the the two movie try from Warner Brothers. I want to say Action Jackson's Warner Brothers as well too. I think so. This is almost like a. I can't remember what movie we did. You know, it was been a while that we we did a movie, and maybe it was Stone Cold, where there is an unofficial sequel. And it's called something else. Yeah. In other places, they call it Stone Cold 2, but it's not Stone Cold 2. It's not, you know, really a sequel, but they try to make it like it is a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I think Hurricane Smith is kind of like that, like the Australian sequel to um, Action Jackson in a way. Well, like even in the trailer, it's like, last time you saw him in Action Jackson, and now he's going down under as Hurricane mm-hmm. Smith. Like, that's how they're literally selling it straight up, and that's like the American trailer as well, too. Yeah. It's this is it's a weird go-round, and it is sad that this is kind of his last hurrah in terms of this is your last chance for, like, um, being the lead star, because I feel like he deserved more movies like that. I don't think Action Jackson – was a very good movie, but it wasn't yeah. because of him. No, Carl Weathers is great. <laughs> yeah, Carl Weathers is always great. He just has so much charisma. Yeah. And he, he's one of those people who didn't even have to try. He just had a natural charisma. Like, mm-hmm. even when he's Apollo in the first Rocky, like, you root against him, but you kind of like him. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you don't really hate him. It's really kind of impossible to. And, um, yeah, this movie is kind of like the Australian uh, sequel to Action Jackson, even though it has absolutely not a damn thing to do with it. Uh, might have been better if it did. But I will say he did get, you know, he obviously had some secondary roles like Chubbs and um, Billy Madison. Was it Billy Madison? No, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, Happy Gilmore, yeah. Whatever. One of those <laughs> movies. And then... Um, Shadow <clears throat> Warriors 1 and 2 of Hulk Hogan. Shadow Warriors 1 and 2 with the, Hulk, the Hulkster on TNT. And then, of course, later... Um, the Mandalorian. He's mm-hmm. on The Mandalorian. He even directed an episode, or maybe a couple episodes, but I know he at least directed one. Yeah, that, and he that, was, probably, that was probably my favorite part about The Mandalorian. When I saw Carl Weathers in there, I was so excited. Oh yeah, yeah. I lo- I mean, I I think I love that show overall. I think it's it's got it's, it's hit and miss sometimes, but I think it's a really good show. Now they're making a movie, and it's really sad because I have a feeling he was going to play a prominent role in the yeah. Mandalorian movie, and now you know his. I don't know what they're going to do with that character if they're just going to write it off. You know, I mean, they already had to do that with uh, Gina Carano, but she, that's only because she was, you know, talking about Hitler when she wasn't supposed to. But, you know, that's just like, it's just like a thing you don't do. But, um, you know, Carl Weathers didn't do that. But rest in peace, Carl Weathers, for, you know, we talk about Hurricane Smith. I think that's obvious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's I don't know. That, that was one of those ones that was just felt like such a bummer. It's like, no. Carl Weathers, you know, like, he's only 76, which also kind of surprised me, because I thought he was almost older than that, because I always pictured him older than Stallone, 
in uh, Rocky, but I, I guess not really. I guess they're about pretty much about the same age. Yeah. St- Stallone actually might be slightly older, I think, actually. I don't know. They're both, but they're both really, it's really close. I yeah. know that. And it's, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it was really, really sad because even though he didn't get those like big time leading roles that maybe I wanted him to, he still got, I mean, he, you know, Apollo Creed and then, you know, uh, and Predator. Yeah, I mean, he's Dylan. a meme forever. Like Dylan and Predator. Yeah. yeah. But um, he still got Action Jackson. He still got this. And, um, boy, this is Hurricane Smith. Uh, originally made in 1990. Comes out in 1992. Um, you and I never seen this one. Yeah, negative. It was one of those ones where it's just like, uh, you know, I was like, oh, here's here's one of those ones. Never seen it. Kind of always wanted to. It's one of those ones just right there on the here's his starring role stuff. Let's check it out. It's weird because there's like there's very little information on this movie out there. Let alone yeah. if, trying to find it to watch it. You have two places pretty much. You either got to get it from Amazon, or you got to get it from iTunes. There's like nowhere else that has this movie going. I found an illegal copy. Oh, nice. That was really good. Actually, it was a really really good copy. <laughs> Um, I hate to like, you know, you know, do that. But I mean, I don't think a whole lot of people were, we wanted to review Hurricane Smith, bring some attention to it. And, you know, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, uh, the student Warner Brothers is hurting that much for me pirating, you know, Hurricane Smith. It's not like a big moneymaker for him. No, if you so, probably bought the DVD, they'd send you a burnt copy anyways. Yeah. <laughs> That that's literally Bro. what Warner Brothers does nowadays. They they send out burnt copy DVDs. <laughs> but don't pirate it. <laughs> so it's just like they, it's like they hired some kid to be like, hey, okay, Billy, you know, if anybody orders this stuff off Amazon, you just run run your DVD burner right here, <laughs> copy a couple extra, you know, videos of SWAT cats, and then send it out to people because there's not that many people buying it, so you could take care of all the orders, right? <laughs> Oh my God, little Billy and his his burnt DVD, um, you know, money making machine. That's hilarious. That's sad. It's, it's, like, it's weird. Care. It's like yeah, it's like uh, I have a handful of Warner Bros. movies that like you buy them brand new, and they're all sealed and they they're, they're all like that. But then you look at the disc and they got the, like the purple bottom disc on it, like a burnt CD, and kind of like it ha- the, the the disc feels different. Feels kind of like it was made by like an HP label maker. <laughs> All these and all these people on like TikTok all the time, like, man, if you stream, you're a loser, man. Don't ever buy just, physical media is the only thing there is. If you, you don't, you know, and I love physical media, but same here. They're, they're not taking it seriously anymore, so <laughs> you are kind of getting ripped off, and it's you know that's a whole other. You yeah, do a whole podcast that's just people that. that I think that, that they just want to do the punk rock thing of just going hard in one in, in the exact opposite direction, so. They, yeah. they almost become blind to what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> 10, 15 years, they won't even buy the bill and buy the players without having to go on like Facebook Marketplace. You won't even go, Spend $400 on a, on a DVD player. Yeah. Like, a, like, like, like that's what a Laserdisc player goes for like nowadays. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that's why I'm okay with my VHS collection. I'm fine with that. <laughs> with the TV included, I probably paid less than $150 for this whole thing. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, I don't know, but um, let's go ahead and talk about Hurricane Smith. We're not going to have a, we're not going to have a uh, a uh, flashback portal thing this week because I mean, there's no real American box office is pretty much straight to video here. I think it, it was theatrically released there in Australia. Yeah, but I mean, this is pretty much an Australian movie. I don't even, did it have a North American release? I don't even know. It says it does. And ironically, the North American release comes like three months before the Australian one. Like, cause it says right here, it says, uh, released January 31st, 1992. Mm. And then, uh, April 9th, 1992 in Australia then. So, mm. so probably what they did is they released it in the U S in a very small market, used it as almost probably a test run. And then this was a full on Australian movie. Like, yeah, everything about this movie it has that feeling of like it's like like a lot of times when you watch like a lot of French movies, like they hide in a sense. Like you think you're watching a, like an American movie, and then you realize it's like, oh no, 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 they grabbed one American actor, and then everybody else in the movie is French. All the crew's French, all that kind of stuff. 
well, that's the exact same thing this is. They got Carl Weathers as the American actor, and everybody else is Australian. The locations are all Australia. The crew's all Australian. Everything about this is an Australian film. And that's where it kind of feels like one of those weird ones where Warner Brothers was like, well, you know, I guess the action Jackson didn't work out so good for you. So uh, here, Carl, you get one more chance, but we're going to have to send you all the way down under and to go see if you can uh, reclaim that title role. Like it almost felt like he got the kind of demotion here. And they're yeah. like, you know what? You're, you're going out there. If, if you can make it as a foreign you know, film actor, if you could do the Clint Eastwood thing and the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> this is this is your this is your shot, you know, yeah. and it's just it's weird because it's like one of those movies where like even in watching it, you know, of course it has like the foreign film feel to it throughout it, yeah. but it also has a very almost made for TV feel, you know, not not a hundred percent. There's stuff in it that still keeps it violent enough and language and some nudity, but the overall feel of the movie. I mean, it, it almost feels kind of on par with, like, you know, uh, Shadow Warriors. <laughs> it does. And almost, in a way, it kind of feels like, um, you know, a double episode of a TV show. Yeah. Because it, you kind of feel like you're being thrown into a, a story that's already happening. Because the thing is, Hurricane S Smith, Carl Weathers' character, doesn't really have much of a backstory. We'll get into how he ends up in Australia and all that in a second. But his only reason to think that he's an action star in this is that he has big muscles. Like there's no, there's nothing like uh, he's not this ex what army guy or anything like that. Like he just goes yeah. over there to get his sister, but he is really good at punching people because muscles. And so <laughs> yeah. that's yeah, it's weird. It's a bizarre one because he has very little backstory in a sense. All it is, like, the movie starts off, it's like, you know, he's working construction in Texas. And then it's like, he gets a phone call. And it's, it's like, oh, Carl, your mother's, or Hurricane, your mother's died. You know, like that. And then he just goes out on this quest to find his sister in Australia, all the way from Texas. But that's all we know about him. He's a construction worker. You know what I mean? Like, that's it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It, it, it's kind of a weird one because, you know, it feels like it would have been more like a, a detective movie where like maybe if that wasn't even his sister, he's he's out like kind of like looking for this lady or something like that. And, you mm -hmm. know, you'd be like, OK, he's a cop. He's a detective. He's, you know, yeah, we got to bring in Hurricane Smith. Yeah. We, yeah. He's got that name and all that stuff. But it's like, that, no, no, no. He's a construction worker. <laughs> he's looking for yeah. his sister. Yeah. And yeah it's also, like, well, one's like, you know, I haven't talked to my sister forever, but, you know, since mother died, I guess, you know, I probably should go say something. <laughs> She has. She was supposed to come back to the U.S. She never did. So, a couple things. One, IMDb locations. It says this opening scene. It, you know, there's a thing. It says Marshall, Texas, at the bottom, mm -hmm. and it might have been in Texas, but it didn't feel like that was even Texas. It felt like that was Australia, except for the cop car. There was one cop car that looked very American, but the rest of it, it was very green. I'm like, this doesn't look like. You know, Texas, and I didn't really know that it was going to be such an Australian movie at that moment. And then halfway through, I'm like, maybe that wasn't even Texas that they were actually at. I think that was maybe the whole thing was in Australia. But oh, I I, I bet it was all shot in Australia or something like that. Yeah. As I said it's weird because it's like this is one of those movies that has like like probably like the most bare minimum Wikipedia page I've ever seen. It's got like a sentence that describes what it is and a couple details, and that's it. Like nobody's filled in any of the box office. Nobody's filled in any of the production, the behind the scenes, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised they even have the cast on there. That's like that's like the only thing they have. <laughs> this is definitely one of the hardest movies we've had to be able to find a way to watch, and yeah. definitely the hardest to find information on. And I don't know. Here's the thing with this movie: it's it's perfect for a B for a B movie. It is really good, mm -hmm. but it has major flaws that you would not tolerate in a regular not B movie. Like the like the lack of backstory, his reasoning for being there, the way it's just kind of abruptly you're in the middle of the story. Why is he good at fighting? Why does he get this reputation? Why does he, you know, doesn't answer any of that. But if you focus on the story, mm -hmm. why he's there, and the characters they throw in there, it's actually a fun. It was an entertaining time. I was engaged. I, yeah. I enjoyed watching it. It's just weird because it's terrible, but it's just more unconventional. It just doesn't fit the mold of a regular movie but for what it's trying to do it does pretty well yeah no 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 that's the thing it's like 
it, it doesn't mean if it was a made for TV movie, you'd be like, man, that's a solid flick. You know, like that's mm. how it kind of feels like or straight to video, which I guess technically probably is how most people saw it. I don't think too many people got to see it in theaters unless you lived in Australia. Um, yeah. You know, it definitely has that. But it's one of those ones where, you know, I think for like the first about hour, there's not tons of action. There's little tidbits here and there, but there isn't a whole lot. They they definitely saved that for like the last like 15 minutes or so. Yeah, their budget was the end. <laughs> like, yeah. They almost went John Woo on the end of it. <laughs> yeah, the, the end's got a great action scene in there. And it, it goes full on, you know, blasting away. You get a cool boat chase and all kinds of stuff. But in the beginning, when it's just sort of like the buildup, as I said, there's t- there's, you know, small stuff in there, but felt like they're almost like that was the one thing I was saying I was like man it feels like there could have been a little bit more at you know action scenes in here yeah and so on and that just that just wasn't existing yeah I mean it's a conflict because you're like there needs to be more action but then like you're also thinking why would there be he's just this regular <laughs> dude yeah you know what I mean it's like, <laughs> like why, why is he even being a detective right now like he's just looking for a sister but they kind of set up what this is about yeah he's in Texas He's on the construction site. This is literally the first like five minutes of the movie. All these mm-hmm. things happen. He's on the construction site. It's a call. Hey man, uh, mom's dead. Dang, that sucks. And then he goes to talk to his friend, his police officer friend. He's like, "Guess I'm gonna have to get find a I'll go to Australia and find my prostitute sister." And he's gone. Yeah. And he's and then then you're down in Australia. You see this guy get thrown off a boat, and eaten by sharks, and you're starting to set this up. And you're like five minutes into this movie, and you're like, you're already like. And that there could have been an early 20 minutes to where mom's had a stroke. He goes and talks to mom, like, your sister, she's in Australia. We got to find her. I haven't heard from her in weeks and blah, blah, blah. And please go get her if I go or something like that. And then she's like, you know, back when you were a Green Beret or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, just set it small. up. Like, that could have been covered even in five minutes, an extra five yes. minute opening. Just to, yeah. Th- th- those things, you. that's what I like to talk about most of all like what little fixes that you could do in writing that are so quick and easy you hire one more actor you do yeah. one more scene yeah. mom's dying she mentions you're a green beret and that you're really good at punching people and you need to go rescue your sister down in australia who's yeah. horning it up and, 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 and you shoot it in somebody's house doesn't matter whose house it is it literally doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> carl weathers house you know it doesn't matter it does yeah it doesn't matter, it doesn't I matter. Mean, you just yeah just you just need one more actor so, but yeah, he's in Australia and you're just kind of off and running. You're like, and, and you're like, what is this thing? What is it? Who's Harvey King Smith? Yeah. Yeah. Who's his yeah, sister? We, Why does Carl Weathers not have a mustache in this one? That, that was the other thing. It's a very interesting. That <laughs> bothered me. He kind of, okay. He looked like he Arsenio looks, Hall. He, kinda, he looked like Randy Jackson from American Idol. <laughs> I didn't like, it's like when George Lucas shaved his beard that one time for that magazine cover. I'm like, no, put that back. <laughs> George said it's not no. It's it's kind of even like when the Hulkster kind of shaved for um, you know, even in Shadow Warriors. It's it's not yeah. that it doesn't. It looks fine actually on Hulk, but it's just weird because you're yeah. just ne- never used to that. Yeah, there's just some people that it it just it has to stay there. Like you've grown it, and now it's you now. Like yeah, ZZ Top. But it's yeah. like you just got to keep it. Yeah, I didn't like the no mustache look. Yeah, Carl Weathers just had that look like when a father decides he's going to shave, and then it's like it's just uncanny looking to the rest of the family. Yeah, what is this guy going on? What is he got this ET thing going on? It just it bothered me. Like, but um, you know, felt like yeah, that that felt like sort of almost like the the midlife crisis. Like, you know what? I, I got to gain some youth real quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I need a lo- I need to lose ten years. Let's let, let's go full clean shaven on this film. Yeah. I lose the scruff because I'm going to go down under, down under, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess he is trying to get smooth, but I don't know, man. Yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like, you know, that's just really the problem with the movie. Honestly, it's just like when you see the no mustache on Carl Weathers, you're like, yeah, I don't know where this thing is going, but yeah, he pulled it off okay. Um, yeah, cool, it- cool clothes. He was dressed nice, though, like the jackets and stuff. I like that. Yeah, he had a lot of great outfits throughout the whole thing. Like that was dead. Like yeah. his outfits were fantastic. You know, even like some of the like, there's like the the goofy kind of like Australian like pimp guy who always gets like his ass beat and so on. But he had a warrant shirt on at one point. That made me happy. He did. He did. <laughs> oh man, yeah. There was some, so 
the, the other thing about this movie, granted it was filmed in 1990, came out in 92, but it feels like it's 1982. Yeah, other than yeah. like the warrant shirt, like it feels 1982 and then the the soundtrack sounds 1972. <laughs> yeah, well, it, I think that's the thing is like that that's the foreign movie kind of uh like, you know what I mean? It's just everything's slightly a little bit farther back in time. Yeah. You know, um, you know, uh, plus one thing I learned too in this movie is uh, Australia has like the most worst racist word for Americans. Septic? What? Yeah, man. Like, I, heard I, was that. Like... I was like, God. I like, like I, I don't know. That, that could, might be the definitive worst racist <laughs> word I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, it's like, oh, you, you know, you're not just shit. You're just like the sewer underneath people's houses. <laughs> Yeah, like I um see my thing was okay, was he look they handle race a little bit differently over there. I'm not gonna say they're all racist. Well here's the thing. In Australia they didn't get rid of racism till nineteen seventy six. That really needs to tell you something. (laughs) (laughs) They didn't get rid of what? Racism? They didn't get rid of racism till nineteen seventy six. Like oh. I remember, I read that like I had one of these history books. They just kind of went through all these like st- stats and stuff, and it's like, yeah, that was right when they're like, okay, no, 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 we, we got to This isn't where we're being equal. Is then I'm like, boy, it feels way behind the rest of the world almost. Yeah, <laughs> just including some yeah. other minor countries and so on. But for the most well, part, I mean, I'm like for the fact that that's a major country, that's America's cousin right down there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was settled. Um, by a bunch of delinquents, but you know what's funny? I've met a lot of Australians podcasting. They're my favorite people. Oh yeah, they're great. Like, I know a bunch of them too. Yeah, podcasting and comic books and so on. I'm not saying anything <laughs> against it. I'm just saying that that's that's what it said in the history book. So like, I feel like when you see some of these uh, racist fellas in this movie too, it's like that's the thing is that they're at that older generation where it's like you know it was only ten years ago that this was okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard well, to break that. Yeah, that's true. And what's funny is um. Like was septic? I couldn't tell for the even towards in the movie. I still didn't know if that's why he just called all Americans or he just called black Americans. Even Carl Weather, uh, Hurricane Smith says that like was oh, that because I'm American or because I'm a black American or something to that? I yeah. Don't, you know. So I still don't know, but they, they called him black guy all the time in the movie. Was it because of that black guy? That yeah, black yeah. guy that was over there. And, and they also call him other stuff too, just in, you know, for a 1990 movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but the septic one—the only reason that I think they meant all Americans because he, he, there was that part where, like, the guy because he becomes Carl Weathers' buddy, even though he's you know, an you know, yeah, an, a jerk. But then he gives him, a, yeah, it, it kind of works out. But he even goes like when he tells the lady, was like when they're going to America, he's like, "There's just a bunch of septics over there. Why would you want to go there?" I mean, maybe that maybe he is just being racist in that way. But I assume that meant all Americans. <laughs> Yeah, septic. I was like, damn, that's harsh, man. And then we yeah. just go on watching it. Okay, I'm septic. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just felt like I'm like, I've never heard that before. They never use that word in Mad Max. <laughs> no, they never use it in Mad Max. Um, <laughs> so, and there's a lot of, there's a few crossovers from Mad Max. We were talking about the, the soundtrack. The same guy, Brian May. Brian May, Brian May pops up on screen. I'm like, Queen? Yeah, well, that, that's the thing I always think, too. When I was a kid, I used to think that, like, when I would see that in Mad Max, and then I realized it was not the same guy. But Yeah, that was really disappointing. <laughs> it was. I was just like, oh, my gosh, look at this. But um, still, that guy, he's... yeah, he's there, which goes – I don't know if that's just something, like – you know, back in the day, you always kind of wonder how big the Australian, like, you know, film kind of world is. Is it one of those ones – is it kind of like France where, like, all the guys sort of work together? You notice if you see, like, one French movie, you notice that you see, like, a lot of recognizable names all on him and so on. Yeah. I wonder if Australia is kind of like that too. Like you know, there's just a couple movies being made at a time down there, and so there's a lot of interchangeable, uh, you know, crew and members and so on. Yeah, that is the case because there's 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 several examples, but yeah, there's that one guy who did who plays in the second Mad Max uh, with the gyrocopter, the yeah. captain. He's in a lot of Australian movies, and he also played. He's in Star Wars. He's in Lord of the Rings, but. Um, yeah, he plays in a lot of Australian movies. He's even in that new. There's a sequel to um, when Baz Luhrmann did that Australia movie uh, 10, 12, 15 years ago, whatever that was. Mm-hmm. And it was just called Australia. It had Hugh Jackman, Nicole Kidman in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I and like he that didn't. Movie. 
Yeah, I did too. And but it turns out that he didn't get to make his full movie. It was very, very, very cut. And he didn't get to tell the whole story. So now there's a show on Hulu called Far Away Downs. And it's like a broader story. And so it literally is the sequel to it's a show that's the sequel to the movie I'll show you. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet. God, that movie's already long as is. The fact that, like, I got a three-hour movie and it was not enough time. (laughs) Yeah. I think he meant that to be, like, a a multi-movie epic, and they just kind of consolidated it. But, um, but yeah, that guy's in the new show. (laughs) I can't remember if that movie's Warner Brothers or something, but they're probably like, you know, we tried an Australian movie once. It was Hurricane Smith. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're not getting the epic three-piece one. No, I mean this movie did did okay though. I mean, especially for over there, I guess. But yeah, that. <laughs> but and it's no Mad Max, but it's still pretty solid. So Hurricane Smith, you know, his mom dies. He's like, I can go find my sister and tell her. So he goes over there, and his sister, his sister is clearly caught up in some wrong stuff. And after getting a terrible ride from a really just mean taxi driver, just. Like everybody's just assholes. Yeah, and this does I mean, not paint the best picture of Australia. This movie. No, these like those Amer- these like those movies where it's like I like obviously it's made by like Australians, but then it's like why do the Australians all look like you know jerks? Yeah, yeah, they they were they were not nice to Hurricane Smith. Maybe they're trying to make a point, but um, so he you know ends up at this um whorehouse and um he they think he's somebody else. Turns out he's not that person. He's just looking for his sister. He meets this girl, and he gets caught up in this whole thing. And so there's this drug deal, this, this big drug deal that's going on, where these this one guy is trying to buy another rival company, I guess, drug business, and close a deal. And that's all happening. And then his sister's caught up in this somehow, and he never really can figure it out. And let's just go like spoiler alert. That's the worst part of the movie. Because yeah. his his sister's just dead. Like the whole no, time, like nobody wants to give him a clear answer. Like it feels like everybody <clears throat> knows, but nobody's willing to tell him. Like it feels yeah. like that would solve all the problems of just like, you know, what the heck was that guy's name? That uh, was it? It wasn't Charlie, was it? Who was who was the, the little guy with the warrant shirt? That like I can't remember his name, but he is runs his mouth all the time, and but he didn't want to tell him that. I'm like, dude. <laughs> Yeah, he never wants him there in the beginning. Like, that's all you had to say. He's like, oh, yeah, by the way, your sister's dead. He would have left. Movie done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, roll credits. I mean, my mom's dead. My sister's dead. Yeah, real sad movie. Um, Australia's they, dead to me. <laughs> yeah, they could have just not done that. Like, and my thing is, they could have just not done that. They could have just had her be alive. And she got caught up in this thing somehow. And, you know. Yeah. Or, or if you want to do it, you could do that thing where like he finally finds her, and then like the bad guy shoots her or something like that. Like one of those ones, like oh you got all this way, yeah. and then yeah, have one of those. But but yeah, to have her be dead the whole time and just have everybody hold it in, like that that's such a yeah. bizarre. Yeah, and then you have the moment like she dies in front of him, and he goes, "Oh no, you unleashed a hurricane," and then he's like goes into hurricane mode, whatever that is, whatever he's called that. I, yeah, I guess he, he saved he his sister. Doing a big old twister like action move. Yeah, it's like, like do like, like that guns dude and... out of like you know uh, Marvel or whatnot. Uh, <laughs> throwing like on that villain's name. He's not in any I, of the movies, but I think I know you're talking about. Yeah, but he does like a spinning thing with John Woo. You got two guns, John Woo style, <laughs> yeah. boom, spinning around. Yeah, something. And what's weird is they're not even called hurricanes in Australia. They're called typhoons. Oh yeah, because it's just like Japan. Yeah, so I mean, it's a Pacific thing specifically pacific i think yeah. well, so i guess specifically an atlantic thing for well for the hurricane and then i guess the hurricanes yeah. yeah but you don't get hurricanes in california right no unless something really bad happens i guess yeah but if, if, if one hits you you still call it a hurricane over there right yes, it would still yeah, okay. be a hurricane yeah so it's not a pacific thing then yeah, so, yeah it it's a yeah south pacific <laughs> And I don't think the hurricanes are like our hurricanes. They're just like a lot of rain, I think. When we you get a hurricane in North Carolina, shit's getting like fucked. It's, yeah, it's getting it's gonna be bad. I mean, I mean, when Japan gets gets a typhoon, that that takes care of the Mongols, <laughs> keeps them at bay. <laughs> there you go. And then the one time oh. they decide to land, no, Japan fights them off. <laughs> Boom. Um. 
that's a movie we should have watched. Something about that <laughs> because this was for us. But we watched it for Carl. That's the thing. We watched it for Carl. It's one of the ones I always wanted to know. It's that thing though. They always kind of still like bums me out. It's just I wish that there was always a director. Like, they, like the downfall is they needed to pair Carl with just like a super team director. Like we keep dropping John Woo. That would have been the thing to have. Like almost picture a movie kind of like Hard Target with uh, John Claude Van Damme. We'll give like say like uh, Carl <coughs> Weathers had like a movie like that with him. Mm-hmm. That would have been the thing I think that he needed to kind of catapult himself. Is he sort of needed like a real solid director to be like, okay, let's go with this. No, he needed a Tarantino. Yeah, even th- um, that would have been that would have been good for him. Like almost later in line, because yeah. that, Tarantino more like revives a lot of like older like actors' careers. But I mean, I'm even Some... talking about like at this point here, like around the Action Jackson, around the Hurricane Smith. This is where like, he, almost like he needed like a Tony Scott movie where he could have starred in or something. Tony like that. Scott would have been good. Um, another he 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 was always really good as part of like an ensemble, like a group. Like in Predator, he worked really well. Yeah. Even though he was kind of like kind of the bad guy in it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like he and like a group of people, like an A team type thing, and he's you know one of the main guys, um, or something. Or like, uh, I always I always pictured him in like Jurassic Park, like a Jurassic Park movie. Yeah. You know, he like does, he, he just, does kind of feel like he would be one of the guys in there, like a he, Dino I, Wrangler kind of, kind of almost like a Muldoon, you know. Yeah, just, just you know, he's he's uh, just you know black uh black paleontologist guy, and uh, I would have watched that. I mean, he he could have done so much. He you're right though. He needed a Tarantino or a Spielberg or a Tony Scott or um, a James Cameron. Yeah, throw him in like a you know an Alien movie or something like that. Yeah, it's one of those ones, you know, because it's like one of those ones, like he gets he gets great, like in a sense, you know, secondary roles. Of course, Predator, Rocky, you know, Happy Gilmore, you know, even Shadow Warriors and things like that. But I felt like for he just needs that one where he, he gets a starring role, but he's got a solid picture, you know, or even close would be have a really strong movie, even if it was a buddy picture. You know, I think like that would have been fine enough for him. You know, if it was like him and the other actor and they were equal, you know what I mean? Not not like mm-hmm. sort of a B actor, but like literally a straight up, you know, full on. Both guys are on the cut. Yeah, like almost like a buddy cop movie, I guess would be yeah. the best way to sort of say it. Like if he if he had like his kind of rush hour or something like that. Where, yeah, you know, but he's the straight like, you know, lace guy. And then, you know, you have your unhinged, almost like lethal weapon. He's like yeah. the Danny Glover. I mean, he could have played that. Yeah. But, you know, he still had a really good career. I mean, the roles he did get were huge. I mean, he, he's going to be remembered forever as Apollo. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be – he's not going to be remembered as Hurricane Smith. No, well, because nobody could get this movie very easily. No, Warner just... Brothers is really like – they made it difficult. I, I bet you – and I hate to sort of say I bet you if you buy this DVD, it's going to be one of those DVDs that's not even formatted for widescreen TVs. It's going to be like, you know, on a single-layer disc. Like, like Warner Bros. has done nothing to it since 1997. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a Hurricane Smith. I'm like, why is that his name? Well, it's but, weird because there's it, two other movies that are called Hurricane Smith, and I, I looked them up to see if they had any relation. No, the other two are like pirate movies. Pirate movies, you have a musician that was Hurricane Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he, I just thought, you know, this is just, every time I Googled it, it was giving me something else. But if you want to watch Hurricane Smith, uh, you got to do some digging. And I'll say this, solid B movie. Mm-hmm. Um, very unconventional in terms of the way the story goes. But the cool little side characters. He he meets, you know, when he goes to this ho- whorehouse, uh, he meets a whore. Mm-hmm. Go figure. And um, despite her background and despite that she's, you know, um, you know, taking m- most of the Gold Coast, um, you know, he falls in love. He does. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he brings her back home with all the septics. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's got the happy ending there, at least, you know. Yeah. And you have Jürgen Prock now in it mm-hmm. who i immediately always think of him from uh, in the mouth of madness oh, he's like yeah, the main yeah. bad guy he was uh Sutter kane that's right which i was that was the only thing about that movie i really didn't like i was very underwhelmed but when you meet Sutter kane i'm like oh i'm kind of underwhelmed yeah uh by Sutter well, kane. The rest so that much. 
Yeah. Yeah, they build them up. I'm like, who's who are they going to get to play this? You know, you, your mind's going. I mean, you've already had like uh, Charlton Heston playing a small role in that movie, and you're like, who's Sutter Kane? Who's Sutter Kane? And you get that guy. I'm like, Sutter Kane? All right, all right. The Hurricane Smith guy. The Hurricane guy from Hurricane Smith. Um, but yeah, he's doing some other stuff. But that's when I when I saw his name, I'm like, what is that? What is that? I'm like, oh, he's Sutter Kane. He was Sutter Kane in that movie. Um, he's in it, and you have a bunch of just like no name Australian actors. You got a guy with a really bad ponytail. Um, and then you have these like plot elements that are slightly set up, but not really talked about. Like, uh, you're going to probably now's characters after the other drug dealer's wife and they're trying to work on this deal and he's clearly like flirting with her and that ends terribly. Um, but you know, oh, and then the, uh, the, um, his girlfriend, Hurricane Smith's girlfriend, whose name I can't remember, um, the guy who calls everybody septic turns out to be her grandfather. Yeah. And, and when, when he said that, I didn't know if that was, I'm like, was that one of those ones where he just says that? Like, you know, is like, oh, y'all have just taken her in like my own granddaughter. Or is that truly it? Because he seemed like he was very clueless on what her life was like, too, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's, he just, I don't know. Look, that guy, that guy knows how to party. Okay. <laughs> that guy's been, he's, he's living in the Gold Coast of Australia, has a Hawaiian shirt on. Um, I think the first time you see him, he's behind the bar. That guy, he knows how to live a life. Yeah. <laughs> so, I accept he's racist. But other than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than that, <laughs> you know, but, uh, hey, Car- Carl Weathers is literally the, the only, like, guy of dark hair down there. Like, like literally the everybody only... in this movie is, like, blonde. <laughs> he's the only black guy you see. He's the only black yeah. person you see the whole movie. Yeah. You don't even see anybody else who's, like, you know, yeah, even brown or in between there's none right no indigenous people no 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 nothing it's like yeah, no aborigines nothing i mean there's... i mean it's funny because these people are blonder than everybody that you know in england and ireland where they all came from that's yeah, the weirdest part are. when i think about it it's all that sun man they get that sun in their hair they get, yeah, they get that blonde bleached. yeah but called the gold yeah. coast for a reason yeah that's, we found out why yeah but um yeah, Hurricane Smith. It's a fun little movie, but we watched it to remember Carl Weathers, and you know what? He's good in it. Yeah, that's the thing is, no matter what, Carl Weathers, you know, no matter even if he's in a real bad film, he's always so amazing in it. That's like the thing. His acting just stands out so much. And this is the one question I want: What do you think's the better movie of Carl Weathers for his starring role ones? You got Action Jackson and Hurricane Smith. Which one do you think? Is the top tier mm. out of those two? Hurricane Smith. You're gonna go and Hurricane Smith. The reason I think so is because Action Jackson really disappointed me. It really mm-hmm. dropped the ball in some areas. It was just messy. Yeah. And it feels it feels like they didn't get that movie made me mad because when I watched it, I was like, this was his one chance, and I don't feel like anybody else took it seriously. No. And you you had there's that. Group of movie you had the um oh um the, what was the Die Hard director John yeah, McTiernan. McTiernan you had so many people from his movies and other action movies at that time that were in it like oh that guy's in it that guy's in it you had a pretty good cast and it just feels like they didn't you know piece together like a real movie and the stupid stuff would happen at the end I'm like oh this is silly and dumb at least with this movie yeah it has a dumb opening and kind of a dumb ending. But here's what the movie is. This guy's looking for a sister down in Australia. He has muscles, so he, he's good at punching people. And But it's pretty well paced, pretty well put together. It's only an hour and 20 minutes long, basically. Yeah. But um, it's, it was – I think I was more engaged watching this than I was Action Jackson because Action Jackson just made me so mad. Yeah, because it, it uh, that that is almost sort of a misleading of like how good it should have been. Where Hurricane Smith at least kind of you kind of get the feel for it right as it's going, and once you kind of yeah. you're like, okay, yeah, 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 I'm I'm rolling with this and so on, and it does as it says it, it delivers good enough as you know for as far as a B movie straight to DVD um, slash kind of TV feeling film, you know, mm-hmm. it's got good action towards the end. You get a cool boat chase scene, yeah, you know. You literally get um, a nice kind of almost like uh, shootout. There sort of reminds me of a mix between like Roadhouse and Commando. <laughs> you know, yeah, going yeah. Through like a mansion blowing the place apart. Kind of reminded me of uh, of uh, 
yeah, Commando, but also um, there's that couple scenes in Leap of Weapon. Oh, First yeah, Leap of yeah, Weapon, yeah. where it's a mansion kind of thing. Yeah, is that well, Beverly Hills Cop is what I'm thinking of. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, yeah, because yeah, Beverly Hills Cop has yeah that similar feel to that, like, kind of like, yeah, the, the mansion kind of raid scene at the yeah. end, you know, almost like a Scarface kind of feel, too, except mm-hmm. it's in daytime. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, I mean, it, it does kind of deliver, but it's that one where you're kind of like, it still has that, like, man, what what it could have been. That, that, that's the thing is I just kind of feel like, you know, Carl Weathers just, just needed that little bit of extra, like, you know, so somebody to kind of give him like, hey, here we go. Here's the big movie. We're going to, you know, he needed, like, like, in a sense, something like a diehard. Like, you know, some someone where they're like, we're going to just drop the money on this. Here we go. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, Jackson should have been that. And he, he took it seriously, but I just don't feel like anybody yeah. else did. I just don't like that. Like, we have all these little. They were. It was a money making machine at that point. Those action movies, and they're like, let's just line this one up. We have all these actors on contract that we're using for these other movies. Let's just throw them in there. You know, it just you know they they kind of funded in like they did the same thing honestly with Predator Two, but Predator Two just happened to work out pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I like Predator Two quite a bit. I, I do too. But they did they they really didn't take it as seriously. Yeah. Um, everybody making it but it just happened to work out but um yeah but I, yeah i think hurricane smith um is a, at least more pleasant to watch because mm-hmm. you know what you're getting yeah no it, and it definitely delivers on that and it's just got some interesting stuff that kind of goes through there along the way yeah it was fun i'm glad you see this is one you know i look at obscure movies all the time and i didn't even know this one existed yeah, and it was one of those ones I, where it's just like I'm like, oh, th- I'm like I've never seen this. I, I've I've, I've kind of looked at it before, but like it's like it's like one of the only other main starring roles of Carl Weathers. Let's do that. That would be the one. Yeah, I I saw it earlier that day. I I saw it for the first time, and then you sent me the thing. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm supposed to do this movie because he sent it to me, and Carl Weathers just passed. But hey, if you're you know doing a Carl Weathers marathon, it's definitely worthy. Uh, a mission to that. This is, you know, his other big starting role. We both think, I think, the the better of the two, even though it's not going to be remembered that way. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a good little fun time. If you like Australian films too, which I actually do. I kind of like, I yeah. like, there's just a certain style and a characteristic in there that I can't really pinpoint and describe, but even Mad Max has it. Mm-hmm. I, I can't really tell you what it is, but there's just certain kind of like um dark kookiness about it <laughs> in there and it's just it's prevalent and I, I don't really know how to describe it but it has that vibe too just like the mad max movies did even though it's a whole different thing yeah exactly just like bmx bandits has <laughs> oh man we need to look at that one again I bmx so. bandits is so fun oh my god <laughs> that movie's so fun when the bad guys just show up like <laughs> like in the woods. Like he's been there the whole time. Oh man. But um <clears throat> anyway, Hurricane Smith. Uh, good luck finding it. But if you do, give it a try. Um rest in peace, Carl Weathers. Great career, great dude. I'm gonna miss him. Um definitely gonna miss him in the Mandalorian, because I like this character in the Mandalorian. But um anyway, um any last thoughts before we get out of here? No, I think that covers it. It's one of those ones, a good ode. Carl Weathers here, you know, watching kind of a rarity flick of his, mm-hmm. you know, pretty much, you know, yeah, as I said, it's about the only place you can go see it. it's on Amazon unless you got a luck of the draw to find it somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. And you might have to rent this one. But anyway, um, as always, you can go to oldmanorange.com and find all the stuff that Spitzer does, Old Man Orange podcast, Pizza Boys comics, all, the, all kinds of stuff. He does everything renaissance man over there and uh if you want to yell at us and talk to us about carl weathers or just share any thoughts you can go to at via vhs on twitter you can find us on oh sorry x you can find us x now at via vhs find us on tiktok at via vhs via vhs pod on the gram that's what the youngins call it i think the gram and then uh if you're in the dystopian hellscape that is facebook we're there too just look via vhs up you'll see the logo that's where we are I am so active on there. So, anyway, 
Y'all have a good one. Thanks for listening. Rest in peace, Carl Weathers, and VAVHS is out.